today on the freezes. Our road trip continues south, and we are definitely sad to leave Yellowstone behind, but we are very excited for the Tetons. It's one of our favorite parks, no doubt. The wildlife is everywhere, and this mountain range never disappoints us. Some of the top camping in the world is done out here. Because the camping is considered world class, you're going to pay world class prices and sometimes those fees don't even come with services. We've been to this park a couple times before, but we're here for the first time with our rig, and we are determined to boondock out here. So, we're going to show you exactly our process on finding these great locations that don't cost a thing, but are still close to all the action. But first, we have to get there. So enough with the chitty chat and let's go. We're about to head on a three hour plus road trip. We're saying goodbye to Yellowstone and we are heading to the Tetons. We are gonna stay at another hip camp to set up our pivot. Search the area for some BLM lands and we are planning on posting up next to those gorgeous mountains for several weeks. This is gonna be a long trip, so if anything interesting happens, I'll make sure to bring you on. We are off to Jackson. Pivot location has the services you need. Fresh water, dump station, groceries, repair services, etc. Whatever you need to get you back out boondocking. Allstays is a paid annual membership that we've had for two years now. We relied on this heavily our first year and it has all things camping mostly. And even though the membership costs around $35 a year, it's actually saved us hundreds. If we're not familiar with the area, we'll choose a location that's close to some known boondocking areas so that we can do some tow-free scouting. You can cover a lot more ground this way and it can provide that peace of mind when you have a location pre-scouted and waiting for you when you roll up with your rig. Look right here. The road we're exploring today isn't even listed on their map let alone all the camping that could be done on it. Now that we're in our second year, we use Allstays primarily to get us in these good clusters of boondocking opportunities, and then we take control from there. Looking for good boondocking spots is like an exploration. It takes time, but I can't tell you how many cool things we've found exploring our surroundings. When we find a potential spot, we'll make a note of its description and we'll add it to the freezedom. Now we do use marked locations often, but this is a good example of awesome areas that you won't even find on the most popular apps. Bridge of Teton National Forest. Searching for some free camping. This one, this road ends up being a little bit too rough for Johnny. We're gonna keep going down the road. We see some more uh, 
roads that have some awesome potential. Some that actually say dispersed on them. This mountain weather gets me every time. Um, it's similar to like Florida or Island. Uh, just the weather changes on a dime. Look at how crazy cool that is. I'll go ahead and try and get a couple pictures of this because I don't think I've ever seen one this cool. There is a black bear. Oh my God, honey, look. Sergi spotted that one. Oh, that's a grizzly. Oh my gosh, how cool he went through the rainbow. There are a few spots up here, but nothing that we want to take our 30 foot rig and challenge the road with. So onward we push. We left our, our RV park that we pivoted from for the last two days. And now sun's in my eyes a great deal, <laughs> but super early morning. Uh, we are getting ready to park for the morning. See if I can get a better angle of that. The sun is just unbelievable. We had our eyes on this place for the last two days and uh, we're excited to be here. Just yesterday we saw three huge bull moose probably 500 yards from our camp and we saw a bear probably a quarter mile from camp. Um, the rainbow bear, 63. It was such a great bear. We're coming up on uh, our new spot for the next seven to, to ten days, potentially. We're gonna go to the to the weekend probably. Um, there, Dare's already up there. Let's see where she is, all the way up there. Right, we're gonna back in where she is, and there's our spot. Not a soul in sight. Got to get set up, run a couple errands. Should be great. Comparison business. Like five dollars a We're taking care of some business today, and so right now we're at the Shell and Grand Teton, and this place is awesome. So here's the Shell. There's water there. RV dump, but our propane. Sometimes finding a good restaurant is tough out here where animals outnumber the humans, but nearby is Jackson Hole. If you're in the mood for pizza, there are a few options, but we love Pinky G's. If it's a Mexican kind of night, we say Merry Piglets all day. We thought we had a chore free day and still ended up with all these groceries, dog food, and a trip to TJ Maxx. We've been in John for a year. Time to go through some of those spaces you normally don't go through. Time to make some decisions and reorganize. Mainly down there. And then of course, under the bunk. 
We got quite the mess going. It's quite the mess, but we love tearing down, simplifying, creating more space. It's become a new hobby, really. In an attempt at a better view of the Tetons, we make a dash for our favorite spot on this road. There is a big old tree down in the middle of the road. We are on a scout mission. Uh, last night we went out to go see what kind of other spots are available out here on this road because um, we took the very first one that's available um, and we can be seen from the highway which we don't really care for that and we found an epic spot where we can view the Tetons so we're on a mission to go see if it's still available um, this is one of the great things about having the forerunner and one thing that we are gonna miss a lot um, Brian's ahead of me right now cruising <laughs> It's Labor Day weekend, by the way, so it's going to be popular. We already know that, so we have to move this evening. It's Thursday. We don't want to give it another day. We are on our way down our existing road that we're staying on, Forest Road 3100. This road is awesome. It has not a lot of dispersed camping, but there are some decent spots out here that are just wide out in the open. A little bit better than ours and not visible from the highway. Let's say our spot is open with the great view of the Tetons. We're going to park the Forerunner there, double back, grab Johnny and hustle up here and finish off our freshwater tank. And then we are going to move a little closer to the Tetons. While the spot was taken, once again, here's the view you would enjoy if you're lucky enough to snag it. Even though we're okay on our water levels for a couple more days, we decided best to leave this spot before the rain makes it impossible. We're crazy. Guys, it's been raining on and off. It's, uh, we got maybe one more day of fresh water. We didn't think it was gonna rain this hard today, but we're gonna back out of here now. When I tried to get on the hitch over here, um, I had a lot of tire spin, so luckily it's, it's real dry underneath, so I'm going to try and keep the truck underneath the, the trailer here. <sighs> Hopefully gravity helps, and the good Lord's blessing, we're going to get out of here, so let's see. Classic Labor Day. I mean, the weather, like you said, it's been off and on like this all morning. Just started to start day downpouring, but we got to dump our tanks and refresh in, so we're going to move anyways. Come on, Johnny. I just need to know if I can pop this up, and I can, so I'm not Yeah. Gonna, so I'm gonna cut hard right, and I'm gonna head straight for that. Okay. Okay? We're just trying to avoid that big puddle. <clears throat> Sweet. Alright, we slid around a little bit. Woo wee! That was intense and I am drenched. Thank you Lord for helping us out of there. And uh, we're gonna regroup at the top of the hill here. Uh, just to, I got the Garmin still in the Forerunner. We're gonna switch that out um, and get our drinks ready. We were just, I was super nervous about getting out of the spot. Luckily the ground held. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm always talking about how gorgeous our move days are, but occasionally you get the move days that are like this. Good morning, we're at Spread Creek, spot six. Actually, we've been eyeballing this spot for a couple years. Um, after we got married in Colorado, we came out here and kind of did uh, Yellowstone and the Tetons and a little bit of Utah, and it's kind of like, where we got the bug for all this. This is sort of like a dream come true for us. We have always loved the Spread Creek area. We're right next to the Grand Teton National Park, but we are adjacent to that. We are in the uh, Grand Teton National Forest. Less than a five minute drive to the actual park. Let me give you a little tour of what we have going on here. So here's our spot. Here's the setup. But look at this nice, awesome pull through. It's super level. It's almost noon. Darren and I are both uh, hard at work inside. I've just decided to take a break and show you guys what we have going on. You know, the Tetons 
are just over this way behind me. What a cool road. Forest Service Road 30290. And there's the entrance right down in there. It's very RV accessible. Can go a little further beyond here, but it gets a little bit more rough. So it's Tuesday, right after Labor Day weekend. We waited until the heavy crowds came out or until they left. And then we snuck in. It's been nothing but crickets since we got here. Here's a Site 7. Go check it out. There's our spot in the background. Looks like they built a bridge across this little stream. But here's Site 7. The bear box here. And there's the access and the pull in. Okay guys, there's Sprague Creek. Not much flowing. It's as wide as a river. Just remember, it's a creek. Ooh, the Tetons are still covered. I don't see any bear sign. I really wanna see a good track to show you. All right, here are the Tetons. Let's see if you can't really see them, but they're back here covered in clouds. This is a phenomenal spot. Some of the top camping in the world is done out here. I would say we're coming up on shoulder season. It's kind of our, our sweet spot. We love shoulder season for a lot of reasons. And a lot of it has to do with, uh, with just having the park more to ourselves, more freedom, less people. Usually means, you know, better wildlife opportunities. Just kind of looking for bear sign. Nothing for bear, just me. We're gonna head back to camp. We will be coming out here and exploring. Just a quick Grand Teton National Forest grill kit here. So you got your digital thermometer. This is gonna be, you know, for the fresh food. When it comes out, I'm gonna baste some of this Sweet Baby Ray's Sweet and Spicy. Here's your grill, right? The ever so nice barbecue chicken legs. And then you're grilling, you're sending out that sweet smell. Then you gotta have this over here for your protection because you don't know what's going on out there. always makes me grill when there's grizzlies like 60 yards away every time. So last night, what was it babe? Around 10, 30, 11, 12, 12, 15. No, I know exactly what time it was. It was like 12.08. I heard something that sounded like just something fell. I came out, it was completely dark, and I'm going to turn on this light. Our back plate shattered, still on the hook. No idea. Uh, we can't even find anything that fell. It just shattered out of n nothing. It's a mystery. Uh, pretty wild. <laughs> at him. Sergi, what is that? Biking the Tetons is fantastic. You can bike nearly everywhere, but dogs are not allowed on all trails, and of course, they need to be leashed. Look what we got loaded. Our bikes, baby. It's our bikes. First time in the Tetons. Taking them to Moose Junction, baby. We're excited to ride down these roads and have an awesome view. I got the 360 packed. We'll see what happens with that. It's early September, so it's like almost 70 degrees out. It's really nice. So in an effort to keep Sergi with us when we want to bike long distances, we bought this wagon for him. And he did good, but he'd rather be running.
continue. JP Cunningham, my favorite place in the Tetons, for sure. Two room cabin. Look at that view. That's the way to do it. Fresh water just ran out, so we got this little six gallon water fill, and this is what we do when it comes time to it, if we need to. We got six extra gallons, that'll last us what, another day or two. So it looks small, but it helps us quite a bit. All right, so you guys know that we ran out of our fresh water yesterday. So we also ran out of our six gallon water fill. So we are here at the lovely Grand Teton to fill it up. Nice little. By a nice fox and four deer this morning. The world's slowest gas, gas pump. Gas pump pumped uh, one gallon a minute. So we lost some time, but we're gonna go hit the Signal Mountain uh, Peak Road. What's it called, babe? I think it's, it's like Signal Mountain Scenic or something. Drive, but it goes to the top of the mountain and it's a really nice view. When our time here was over, we spent 22 days just outside the Bridger Teton National Park. We paid for two nights at our initial pivot location, which was $157.50, to set up our 20 nights of boondocking right outside the park on these two forest roads, which carry no camping fee. Even if you decide to boondock for five nights at Coulter Bay, it would still cost you $620. But regardless of how you can make it happen, we highly recommend getting out here and taking an extended stay if possible. We hope this gives you an additional option for planning your upcoming trip to this amazing park. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss our newest locations coming up. And guys, they're really good. And Darian and I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.